Good afternoon. It is time to begin our fifth Sunday afternoon evening service. That's going to be head, headed by our young men uh, at this time. We are glad that everybody is stuck around after that fantastic meal uh, that we had where I ate too much as usual. Uh, we appreciate everybody that prepared food and everyone that stuck around to enjoy it and partake in the fellowship. As we go into uh, this service, uh, we want to thank all the young men who have volunteered to uh, take the time to prepare uh, for this. I know that Matthew has uh, been preparing extensively uh, for this lesson. This is the first time that he's ever spoken by himself. It's the third time that he has uh, spoken for us. It's going to be the first time that he's done a, a lesson solo, and he's been hard at work at that. And we appreciate that and all the other young men uh, who are going to be up here. We're still working on the fifth Sunday for April. Uh, be sure to encourage these young men. Uh, we know that they're an encouragement to us when they get up here uh, and their, uh, uh, their example um, before us is, is something to be proud of as a congregation. Um, so we appreciate that. Uh, the order of service, we're going to begin reading from the scripture here in just a moment. Tanner Cook's going to read the first psalm, and then he's also going to run PowerPoint uh, for us after he reads. Uh, singing is going to be done by Brother Seth Hackett. Opening prayer is going to be done by Alan White. Then Matthew will have the lesson. Uh, Teddy Spivey will head the table, and he's going to be assisted by Ethan Crockett. And then Jake White is going to have our closing prayer. So at this time, we'll begin uh, with our reading. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth its fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whether he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way, the way of the ungodly shall perish. Uh, all the songs this afternoon should be on the PowerPoint, uh, but for music book, uh, number one will be 274. This afternoon will be number 231.
Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've blessed us with. We're so thankful for all the very many blessings that you've given unto us, dear Lord. We pray that you continue to be with us. Forgive us whenever we fail thee, dear Lord. We pray that you'll be with us during this worship service. We pray that you'll be with Brother Matthew as he gives us the, the lesson. And we pray that you will give him a ready remembrance of what he has prepared. Dear Lord, we pray that you will be with each and every member of this congregation. We pray that much good will come from us and we can be shining light to those around us, dear Lord. We pray that you will be with the elders of this congregation. Continue to allow them to lead us down the, the righteous road, dear Lord. We pray that you will be with those that are sick at this time. Be with Brother Scotty Yaman and D.R.L. Walker, dear Lord. We pray that you will place a healing, healing hand over them and may they return to much wanted and needed health. Dear Lord, we pray that you will be with us. Continue to bless us, dear Lord. Forgive us when we do fail thee. For it's in your Son, it's all the name that we do pray. Amen. Uh, the invitation song this afternoon will be number 655. And uh, before Matthew's lesson, we'll sing 676. <laughs> There's within my heart a melody, Jesus whispers sweet and low, in our eyes with the peace be still, in all of my seven glow, Jesus, Jesus, Good afternoon. Uh, I want to thank everybody that prepared a meal. It was uh, delicious, and I certainly got full off of it. And uh, I want to thank Justin and the elders for giving me another opportunity to deliver a lesson. Uh, the lesson today that I prepared had come from polishing the pulpit when I had a chance to go to it in August from Brother Dan Winkler, and I just wanted to give him credit. So the uh, title for the lesson today is, Life is Not About Time, It's About Choices. <laughs> And how are you spending your choices? From 1977 to 2011, a man by the name of Muammar Gaddafi ruled as dictator of Libya. And as he ruled there, he sent many early people to or many people to an early grave. And when his regime came to an end and he was being murdered by his own countrymen, his last words were, "Do you not know right from wrong? Do you not know right from wrong?" So, do you know right from wrong? Do you know how to make decisions that are right rather than what are wrong? During Brother Dan's lesson, he told us to remember this statement right here and write us down. Your life is nothing more or less than the composite of the decisions that you make. So, in other words, your life is based on the choices that you make, and that's why you're here today, or the choices someone else has made for you. So how are you spending your choices? If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms 1, and that's where the majority of our lesson will come from. And if you look at the first word, you see blessed. And this word translates to the word happy. So Psalm 1 
begins by saying, happy is the man. So if you look at the last verse of the psalm, you see the word perish. And if you look at Revelation 9-11, you're introduced to a word that means destroy. And this word is also translated to perish, which we find in the psalm of choice. So the psalm begins by saying happy and ends by saying destroy. But if you look between the first word and the last word, you're reading about nothing but making good choices and the consequence of the choice that we make. This is a psalm that tells me not, not only tells me to make a good decision, it tells me my happiness and my ultimate destiny hinges on the choices that I make. So let's look at Psalms 1 for a moment and let it help us make good choices. For our time of study, I would want us to focus on five fetters, F-E-T-T-E-R-S. Five fetters that can restrain us from making bad decisions and help us make good decisions. Now let's read the psalm, but before you do, as we're reading this, make a count or mark in your Bibles the word not or nor, as they appear, and we will go back and find five fetters. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree, Planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like the chaff the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteousness. But for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now let's go back and focus on these uh, negatives that we found. And we're going to look about and look as they appear and see what we can learn about making good choose, good decisions. The first one you read is, who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. So from this, we can learn to listen to the right, right people. In Proverbs 12, 5, it reads, The thoughts of the righteous are just, the counsels of the wicked are deceitful. And then New Testament, in Philippians 4, 9, it reads, What you have learned and received and heard and seen, In me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So we learn here that if I want to make the right choices, that I need to listen to the right people. If we look at the second uh, knot in the uh, the psalm, we see it says, Nor stands in the ways of sinners. This is telling us we need to keep good company. Bad things happen in bad places with bad company. So keep good company. In Proverbs 1.10, it says, My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. And in Proverbs 4.14, it reads, Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not walk in the way of the evil. We need to go to good places and keep good company. The second, uh, or the, yeah, the second fetter we come to is the word, nor, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. This is telling us to make the right kind of friends. We learn about this in Proverbs 26, 6 through 9. Whoever sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off his own feet and drinks violence. Like a lame man's leg, which hangs useless, is the proverb in the mouth of fools. Like the one who binds the stone in the sling is the one who gives honor to a fool. Like a thorn that goes up into the hand of a drunkard is the proverb in the mouth of the fool. And then in the New Testament, in James 4, 4, we also read of this. You adulterous people, do, do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. We need to make the right kind of friends who are people who are going to uplift us and bring us closer to God. The next fetter is we read about is in verse 3. The leaf does not wither. We're, we're telling, this is verse is telling us to plant yourself in the Lord and stand for what is right. We need to take deep root into God's word and uh, like just make sure you're always standing with him. In verse 4, it, it says, uh, 
stand tall even if you stand alone. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff the wind drives away. Brother Dan used the example of an apron, and when you put wheat in it, you shake it. And the grain falls, but the wheat blow, uh, the chaff, the wheat, it blows away. We are to be like a tree and not like a chaff, and stand with the Lord. Then in verse 5, we read, Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation. We need to get ready for the judgment. 1 John 4.17 reads that by this is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is also are we in this world think will my choices set me on course for heaven so these five fetters can help us from making the wrong choice now for the last half of this lesson we're going to build an acrostic using five letters right r-i-g-h-t and each of these letters stand for something, and if we remember them, they can help us make good choices. If you look at verse 2, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. You can learn from this verse that we can use the word of God to make the right decisions. The first R stands for reputation. In 1 Timothy verse, chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Moreover, he must be well thought of, by outsiders, that he may not fall into disgrace and to the snare of the devil. You need to think, before you make a decision, how will these choices affect my reputation? How do people see you? Do they see you as wise? Do they see you as intelligent? Do they see you as wealthy? Do they see you as friend? Or do they see you as Christian? The next letter is I, influence. In Matthew 5, verse 16, it reads, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that you may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And then again, in Romans four seventeen, it reads, As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations, in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Influence here is let the word dictate your actions. It's, it's uh, scientifically proved that more than 60 people are being influ influenced by you throughout your life. Our next letter is G, which stands for glory of God. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31, we read, So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. We must let our life bring glory to God. The next letter, H, stands for heaven. In Philippians 3, verse 14, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Never make a decision that's going to impact your eternity. Some choices have eternity attached to them, so you must choose well. And the last letter, T, stands for truth. You need to spend time with the Bible to know you are right in the sight of God. Let the word dictate what we do. Now that is how you spell what is right. Every day, we make decisions, but some have eternity attached to them. One careless moment can make a lifetime of regret. Make good choices. If you're here today and you have not been making the right choices, and you have fallen from the Lord or you've not been baptized, please come as we stand and as we sing. There's a Is a fountain of love from the source of love, and he gives us all freely drink. When you come, when you come to the fountain free, when you come, when you come, just for you and me. Thirsty soul, thirsty soul, hear the welcome call. Tis a fountain.
if you're here this afternoon and did not get to take the Lord's Supper this morning, uh, you have the opportunity to do so at this time. Just come to the pew to my right as we sing the first verse of 764. Let's pray. Our Holy Father, we thank you for this day and all your many blessings. Please bless this bread as we partake. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Heavenly <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this day and all your many blessings. Please bless this cup as we partake. Please help us to remember what it stands for. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for this day and I am made blessings. We thank you for everything you have given us. Please help us to give back willingly and give back as much as we can to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Six hundred and eighty four will be our closing hymn. We appreciate so much the presence of each and every one of you. We have visitors and guests with us this afternoon, and for your presence, we're ha uh, very happy, and we hope that you will come and be with us every opportunity that you have. I remind everyone who can possibly go with us to the pavilion this afternoon, we need your help. Uh, we need some to lead singing and to lead prayer and to just help sing. And uh, so come over there and be with us and, and extend your Lord's Day activities just a little bit further. And uh, we usually have about a 30-minute service there. And uh, we would, I know that the people there would appreciate it. Let me apologize to the Branham and Hackett families because Darlene came in this morning and I was busy talking to somebody and she put two announcements in my filing cabinet and I forgot them, and I started up uh, to make them after R.W. concluded, but uh, he said, well, let's stand for the closing song and prayer before I was ready, and so I didn't uh, uh, get those in, and, and I apologize to them personally, but these are thank you notes for, from those two families. Thank you for the calls, cards, and visits during my recovery from the broken ankle. A special thank you to the man who came and uh, removed a fence so that it would be easier for me to get in and out of the house. Thank you so much. And Christian love, Dennis and Darlene Hackett. And then this note from Miss Hattie. Thank you for thinking of me with a bag of Christmas cards. I miss you all so much. The cards were so much appreciated in Christian love, Sister Hattie Branham. We mentioned a lot of the sick uh, a little bit earlier, but some of you might not have been here let me mention uh, some of them again. 
Barrett Cook is going to have a, some tests on uh, Wednesday of this week in Nashville. Remember him. Uh, Billy Myers from the Baghdad Church of Christ is uh, now at his daughter's home and uh, improved some, but uh, still having some problems. Sister Christine Jones, uh, uh, Peggy Denton's mom, uh, will be hopefully coming to rehab at NHC in Cookville uh, later on this week. Kathy Kemp is quite ill this morning, and uh, Sister Ruby Fisher did not need to get out today. Cheryl and Dimple Hicks are sick also. And remember, of course, Scotty Yeaman and, and uh, Miss Lovell and Miss Opal, who are all in the uh, nursing home. Keep them in your prayers. And be sure to remember, too, Durell and Sue Walker, uh, because they will still be in for a good while. We have had a wonderful uh, period of worship this afternoon, as we did this morning. Uh, we have enjoyed an excellent meal together, and we appreciate all who helped with that. And uh, any of you who are complaining to about uh, having eaten too much, just come up and help me with the kids' class, and if they're like they are this were this afternoon, you'll get yourself a workout. Uh, we really enjoyed that, boys and girls, and uh, we appreciate all of our little ones and. And we counted them up here, and there was one of the kids said, we're going to have another boy soon. So you can ask Jeremy and Christy about that if you haven't heard it already. Uh, but we rejoice with them. I believe that's all the announcements that I have, except remind you that, uh, Justin, you still got that planned, even after that big meal. Okay, when are we going to eat again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Eight o'clock here at the building for anybody who's game. Uh, there will be a countdown, right? Is that what you're calling it? Uh, yeah, these these kids really get into that. And I uh, mentioned too, Mr. Milton Harris. Remember he and Carolyn as well. And so uh, be sure to keep them in your prayers. Let's plan to be back Wednesday night, seven o'clock. Hope all of you have a happy new year. And uh, that'll be tomorrow, won't it? Seems like this year has passed very, very quickly. Let's stand for the closing song and prayer, if you would. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can We humbly bow down before you, Lord. We thank you for letting us assemble today and come together. Be with us as we depart from here. In Jesus' name, amen.